Okay, today we are, happy St. Patrick's Day. Today we are doing lesson 7.9, which is um, fractions and properties of addition. So we've learned two properties of addition so far, Owens. We've learned the commutative and the associative. Um, the commutative, can anybody tell me what the commutative property lets you do? Ethan? Well, let's take and swap the numbers. So you can do 4 plus 3, and then 3 plus 4, and it's the same number. Bingo. Perfect. Give yourself a point. Look, the commutative property lets you flip-flop the numbers. As Ethan was saying, 4 plus 3 equals what? 7. Seven. And 3 plus 4 equals? 7. Seven. Okay. What's another operation that the commutative property works on, Jace? Um, multiplication. <clears throat> multiplication. Very good. Because, like addition, multiplication, three t or four times three is 12, and three times four is 12. Okay, the other um, property that we're going to be using today, and properties are kind of like rules. Cash, put your feet on the ground. Do that. Show me you're ready to learn. Um, the other property is the associative property, which allows you, Owen, you're not, you don't need to be writing anything right now, to move the parentheses, okay? So parentheses tell you what you're going to do first, Shelby. So if you have the problem four plus three plus five, and the parentheses are around three plus five, that means that's what you do first. But Sophie, the associative property allows you to move those parentheses so that you could do the four plus three part first. So that being said, the associative and commutative properties of addition can help you group and order add-ins to find the sums mentally. We're gonna be doing a lot of this stuff mentally today. Mentally means what? In, like your, in your head. In your head. You can use mental math to combine fractions that have a sum of one. The commutative property of addition states that when the order of two add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. For example, four plus five is the same as five plus four. The associative property of addition states that when the grouping of add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. For example, five plus eight plus four is the same as five plus eight plus four. Just do it in a different order. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the map shows four lighthouses in the Florida Keys and their distances apart in miles. The Dry Tortugas Lighthouse, everybody say that, Dry Tortugas. Dry Tortugas. The Dry Tortugas Lighthouse is the farthest west, and the Alligator Reef Lighthouse is the farthest east. They want us to figure out what is the distance from the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between all four. So first we know the distance from Dry Tortugas to Key West, and from Key West to Sombrero Key, and from Sombrero Key to Alligator Reef. But I'm gonna show you guys how to add those, th excuse me, those three mixed numbers, Sophie, in your head. They look pretty big, don't they? It's 70, and five tenths plus 43 and five, no, sorry, six tenths plus 34 and five tenths. Now, which of those two, and each one of these is called an add-in, right? The, when we're adding numbers, each section or each part is an add-in. So which two of those add-ins do you think we should add together first? 
Landon, what do you think? 34 and 43. Wait, 70 and 43. Dakota, what do you think? 70, 5, 10, 10, 34, 5, 3. Okay, don't forget that we can say and now. Okay, so right here is going to be the word and. So say those one more time, Dakota. 70, 5, 10, 10, 34, 5, 3. Why did you choose those two? Because they're the distance. Because they're asking what's the distance between the dry church and the lighthouse and the alligator roof lighthouse. But just forgetting all that, why did you choose these two numbers? Because they're both five tenths. Because they're both five tenths. What does that matter? Because it can make. I'm you, talking to Dakota. Because you can't add two different. Uh, what's five tenths plus five tenths equal, Dakota? A whole. A whole. Bingo. So, Dakota, nice job. Give yourself a point. So, Dakota said that we're going to do this one plus this one first. So, let's write them down in that order. So, first is 70 and 5 tenths plus 34 and 5 tenths. And then the last one is 43 and 6 tenths. And I know it's a tough habit to break, but remember... Between the whole number and the fraction, we say the word and in order to read it correctly. Okay, so we're going to just copy those same numbers again right below where we wrote them. 70 and 5 tenths and 34 and 5 tenths and then 43 and 6 tenths. Okay, so we're going to start by adding these two guys together. No, 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 no. Let me write them in the correct order on my board here. So we're starting with 70 and 5 tenths, and we're adding it with, um, to 34 and 5 tenths, and then the last one is 43 and 6 tenths. So if we add these two together first, What's 70 plus 30? 100. 100. Mm -hmm. But we've got 34. So, so 70 100. plus 34 is 104, right? 104 and 5 tenths plus 5 tenths is what? 105. 5 tenths plus 5 tenths is what? To start with, it's 10 tenths, right? Which is the same as 105. So in those parentheses, Landon, 70 plus and 5 tenths plus 34 and 5 tenths, we got 105. Let's stop with the doodling. I don't want to see any more doodling today. I'm going to start taking dojo points, okay? And then we still have to add on 43 and 6 tenths. So if we are adding 105 plus 43 and 6 tenths, what's our fraction going to be? 6 tenths plus nothing over here is 6 tenths. 5 and 3 is 8. 10 and 4 is 14. That's our answer, 148 and 6 tenths. I'm just going to put in and put in there. So 148 and 6 tenths. Okay, so those were bigger numbers just for the example, but most of the ones that we're doing today are smaller. So after you get that copy down, flip to the... Next page, we have one and one third plus two plus three and two thirds. Okay, which two of those numbers should we add together first, do you think? Jace? Um, one third plus three and two thirds. Okay, slow down and say it correctly. One and one third plus three and two thirds. Okay, how come you think that? Because 
two thirds plus one third equals three thirds, which is equal to one half. No, one whole. Bingo, nice job. Okay, so Jason's exactly right. So we're going to put this two last. We're gonna rewrite them one and one third plus three and two thirds plus two. So underneath where they have written it, you're gonna write one and one third plus three and two thirds plus two whole. And we're gonna put parentheses around our first two add-ins. Now for now, let's look at just what's in the parentheses. So Jace already told us the fraction part, one third plus two thirds is three thirds or one whole, right? Mm -hmm. So let's write plus one whole right here. And we got the fraction done. What's three plus one? Four. Four. So in these parentheses, we've got three and one is four, and one third plus two thirds is three thirds or one whole. So in the parentheses, how many holes are there? Five. Five, right? So under these parentheses, we're gonna put a five. And then we still have to add the two. So five plus two is seven. 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 It's as simple as that. All right. Next, um, they want us to break this problem apart and say what property we use to do what we did. Okay, so to start with, we have, we have these three add-ins. We have three and four tenths, five and two tenths, and six tenths. Which two should go together first? Somebody who hasn't answered yet today. Cash, which two should go together first? Um, three and four tenths and five and two tenths. No? Wait, no, three and four tenths and six tenths. How come? Because they're both denominators of ten. Well, all of them have a denominator of ten. Waylon, which, what do you think? Three and four tenths plus six tenths, you know why? Because four tenths plus six tenths equals one whole. Bingo, you got it, nice job. Okay, so we're gonna rewrite this as, um, they have written five and two tenths first, plus three and four tenths, so what are they missing here? Six, six tenths. tenths. So we need to write six tenths in there. And then we need to write six tenths in here again. But that tells us that the first operation we're going to do is three and four tenths plus six tenths. So here's what we're doing. Three and four tenths plus six tenths. And then whatever answer we get there, we're adding on five and two tenths. Cash, the goal is here to find two numerators that added together equal your denominator. So that makes it a whole. So four and two equals six, and then six and six is 12. And so that would give us an improper fraction. But if we combine the four and six, that's 10 or one whole, and then we can add on the two tenths separately, okay? So Sophie, we're looking for two fractions that when we add them together, add up to be the number of the denominator, okay? So four and six adds up to be 10, which is our denominator. So here, the fraction part, four tenths and six tenths is 10 tenths or one whole. And then how many other holes do we have in here? In the parentheses, shout it out. Three. Three. So three plus one equals? Four. 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 So in the parentheses, we have four, and then we just need to add on five and two tenths. So four holes plus five holes is nine holes and two tenths. So that's our answer. So first we moved the numbers around, which was the commutative property. 
And then we moved around the parentheses from the beginning to to the end to, which was the associative. And then we added five and two tenths plus four whole, which was nine and two tenths. Easy. I think so. I think it's kind of fun. It's fun. I showed Ella before she left. She figured it out in like two seconds. Ella. Ella, she left to go to an appointment. Okay. So if you don't have it quite yeah. yet, don't worry. We've got six examples we're going to do. Okay. Can we try one of these for ourselves? You're getting ready to try three by yourself, but Yay. first we're going to do six together. So um, if you're not entirely sure, you need to be paying close attention. All right, so the numbers they gave us, this is, I'm copying the exact problem that they gave us here. Just like this, this is what they did. Which two add-ins do you think that we should put together first, Shelby? Um, the two and seven eighths and the one and one eighth. How come? Because seven plus one is eight and that's one whole. Bingo, you got it, good. Okay, two and seven eighths plus one and one eight, plus three and two eight. So we switch the places of these two guys. And now we're gonna add these two together. So we have two holes plus one hole is three holes, plus one hole from the fraction is four holes, right? Make sense, Sonia? So we got seven eighths and one eighth is one hole, plus another hole is two holes, plus two more is four, plus, three and two eighths. So four holes plus three holes is seven holes and two eighths. So in this problem, this is how you should write it down. We switched the terms around. We did two and seven eighths first. Then we added one and one eighth. And then the last one was three and two eighths. We put our parentheses around the first two, which added up to be four. Then we added on our last term, and that got us to seven and two eighths. Just moving stuff around. Okay, this one's a pretty easy one. One and two fifths plus one whole plus three fifths. Which two add, and they're saying to do this first. Which two add-ins do you think we should add together first, Owen? Um, two-fifths and one and two-fifths. Very good. So we're going to do one and two-fifths plus three-fifths first, and then we're going to add on one whole. So now we have two-fifths plus three-fifths is five-fifths, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we add that on to one whole, so that's the same as two holes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, plus one more is three. Three holes is your answer. So we did one and two fifths plus three fifths. And then our last step was to add on the one whole. First we did what was in the parentheses, which equaled two. Then we add on the one and we get three. Five and three six plus five and five six plus four and three six. Okay, so I'm going to call this A, B, C. Which two add ins should we get together first? Brinley. A and C because three plus three equals six, which would be six six equals one. Bingo, she got it. We want A and C together first. 
So we're gonna rewrite it with A and C together. You can give yourself a point. Five and three, six, plus four and three, six, covers how many stop? Plus five and five, six. Okay, we're gonna do these two first, like Brindley said. Three, six plus three, six is six, six, or one mm -hmm. whole. So, and five and four is nine holes. So nine holes plus one more hole from the fraction equals 10 plus five and five, six. 10 plus five is 15 and five, six. So we did five and three, six plus four and three, six. Then we added on five and five, six. Who's making that noise? I was making a noise. Was something coming out of your mouth? Fifteen and five, six. Okay, three more to go. One and one fourth, one and one fourth, two and three fourths. One and one fourth plus one and one fourth plus two and three fourths. Okay, so we have A, B, C. Sonia, which two should we get together? Uh, I think we should do A and B because uh, four, four, one and uh, one, one. No, one, Colin, one. why don't you help her out? A and C because three plus one is um, four fours and that equals a whole. That's exactly right. Give yourself a point. Sonia, you got to look at your fraction, okay? We've got one-fourth and one-fourth. That's two-fourths. Does that make a whole? No. no. Our goal is to get the same number on top and bottom, okay? So like Colin said, if we go one-fourth plus three-fourths, that gives us four-fourths, which is a whole. So we don't have to mess with fractions anymore. That's our goal, is to eliminate as many of these fractions as we can. Okay, does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're gonna do one and one fourth plus two and three fourths plus another one and one fourth. And when we put those in parentheses, we've got the fraction part one fourth and three fourths equals four fourths, which is one whole. Here's another whole. And here's two more holes. So all together, four holes plus another one and one fourth. So four holes plus another hole is five holes and one fourth extra. Okay? So we're going to do one and one fourth plus two and three fourths plus one and one fourth again. In the parentheses, we have four plus one and one fourth gives us five holes and one fourth. Okay. 12 and four ninths plus one and two ninths plus three and five ninths. So Sonia, since our denominator's nine, what two fractions up there would add up to be a whole? So just look at the fraction part and start going through them. Four plus two would be what? Four plus two would be six. So it wouldn't be these two. Two plus five would be what? 
So it wouldn't be these two. What would 5 plus 4 be? And that's what our denominator is. So we're going to do this one and this one first. Does that make sense? Okay, so 12 and 4 ninths plus 3 and 5 ninths. And then we add on our 1 and 2 ninths. Okay, so in these parentheses, our fraction parts add up to be one whole. And then we've got 12 plus 3, 15 plus one more. 16 in the parentheses plus 1 and 2 ninths equals? Uh, 17 2 ninths. 17 and. There you go. Man, I trained you guys so good. You guys can't say and ever. You'd say, Mom, I'm going to the store with Landon and Cash. I can't say and because Miss Peterson said never say You just say said and. and. You just said it. I'm making a point, right? Telling yes. Telling a story. I'm going with Landon and Cohen, Cash, Chase. <laughs> okay, here we go. Kick, kick balls Write this down. Around. 12 and 4 nights plus 3 and 5 nights plus one and two ninths. Parentheses around the first two, which add up to be 16, plus one whole and two ninths equals 17 and two ninths. Easy. Okay, Zing, this one's for you. All right, so we have three twelfths is add in A plus one and eight twelfths B plus nine twelfths is C. So what two add-ins should we do together first? A and C because three twelfths plus nine twelfths equals what? A whole. Oh, there you go, girl. Nice job. And lucky for us, um, there's not even any whole numbers attached to these two fractions. So, how many holes are in our parentheses? One. One hole. Very good. One plus one and eight twelfths equals two holes and eight twelfths. Cash, are you understanding it? Yes. Okay. All right. So. You guys have three problems on the back of this page to do, or on the front of the next page. And the top three is number eight, nine, and 10. That's all you have to do when you get those three finished. Raise your hand and I will check them.